Hi everyone. Welcome to Wonderment Gardens presentation, our introductory class on nourishing teas. My name is Annie Jones. I'm a clinical herbalist and I'll be leading our journey today. Tea is a general name we use for a water-based infusion. Any kind of a water-based infusion is considered a tea. Today we'll be taking that definition a little bit deeper. Let's start with a little vocabulary. Um, first, let's talk about the difference between um, the definition of a tea and the definition of infusion. Usually, when we're talking about um, a medicinal herbal tea, what we're usually talking about is an herbal infusion. When we're referring to a tea, usually we're referring to um, a hot or cold beverage taken for enjoyment. Okay. Now the difference is, is that a tea is steeped for a shorter period of time, three to five minutes. You use less herbs in a tea, only one to two teaspoons, depending upon um, your preference, because it's all about your preference. What tastes good, you know, to you. It has a, because of the shorter extracting times, what you're really extracting is the aromic properties um, the smell and the really nice kind of gentle taste of that tea, right? When the tea is made um, out of the flowers, it's sometimes called a disdain. An infusion, on the other hand, is usually um, taken as a supplement. It's supplementing or addressing some kind of either nutritional issue or something else going on in your system. You're taking it as a supplement, right? Usually there's a lot more herb per water and you're so steeping it for a longer time. Usually you want one um, ounce of herb to 16 ounces. That's pretty standard. It can give or take a little bit depending upon your choice, the herbs that you're using and what you're addressing. The longer steeping times, right, um, extract a higher level of constituents from that herb. So it's much stronger tasting, much deeper tasting, okay? I like to add them to food. I like to make oatmeal out of infusions and jello out of infusions and rice out of infusions. I like to put them in my soup, all different kinds of things. If you can put water in it, you use your infusion instead. That's great. Otherwise, what you're looking at is somewhere between a quarter to um, a half a cup uh, several times a day for uh, as a general kind of a dosage. Okay. You're going to need a few supplies to make your herbal infusion or your tea. Um, fresh or dried herbs. Um, fresh herbs taste a little different and you need a lot more um, herbs to make the same amount as dried to get the constituents out of them. Tastes a little different also. You need um, water, hot or cold, depending upon what you're doing. And you need your cup or container, French press, quart jar, teapot, a lid, a strainer, and a cup. Then to make your herbal infusion, you take one ounce of your dried herb, place it in a container that holds up to 16 ounces. In general, I think that's about a tablespoon per cup. Always a better idea to measure. Cover that with boiling water over your herbs. Stir. Cover that and let it steep for 20 minutes minimum to up to 12 hours. Uh, strain it and drink. Now in this picture, I have a picture of um, French presses. I love French presses for herbal tea, especially for beginners, because there's no, that's all you need for supplies, right? You don't need a strainer. You don't need a lid or a cover. Um, all you do is you put your herbs in there, fill it with boiling water, stir it up, let it put your lid on, let it sit, and when you're ready, you push down the little plunger, pour it in your cup, ready to enjoy. We're going to talk about three different herbs today that are my favorite herbs to use in herbal infusions. Um, 
and those are oat straw, nettles, and dandelion. So let's get started. So let's get started with Avena sativa or oat straw. I'm not going to get too much on my soapbox about common versus botanical names. It is a really good idea to learn the botanical names. If you're going to be using herbs to help your family and yourself with um, health, increased health and well-being, you want to know what plant you're using. And if you're buying it in everyday commerce, there are several different varieties of several different plants um, that are called the same thing. And you want to know what you're getting. Sometimes those plants have completely different actions or you use them in different ways. So um, I call this one oat straw. It's often also called milky oats. And you can see in the picture, this lovely picture here, um, it's got these little seed pods. It's kind of like a grass. It's got these little seed pods. And when it's ready to harvest, when you pinch those pods, it gets milky and it kind of squirts out almost. That's when it's the best. That's when all of the nervous tonic and the restorative energy is really going on. You know, that's when the magic is happening. At that time, that's when I harvest it and I take the um tops these these milky pods and i make a tincture out of those or an extraction out of those that i keep um as a tincture or sometimes um uh as a glycerite depending upon what i'm doing and then i use the rest of the plant and cut it back and use the grass um, in the tea. You can also use the tops in the tea as well, which I usually do about the third harvest, because if you cut it, you get about three harvests. Okay, so um, oat straw. This is an amazing, an amazing plant. It works mostly on the level of the nervous system. Um, it rejuvenates the nerves, kind of soothes things down like a long exhale, like, oh, like you have a little bit, a couple of drops, and everything just seems to relax and smooth out, um, gets all those synapses back in order again and back in line again. Um, so they call that an adaptogen because it helps your body deal with um, uncompensated stress. And often it's specifically indicated when people are overtaxed, their adrenals are overtaxed, they're acting like crazy people, they're burning the candle at both ends, there's a lot of anxiety going on, right? And this is restorative for mind and body and helps everything to just smooth out, all the knots come out and you just kind of relax. But it's, even though it's considered to be um, they're, it's called a nervine um, and a slight sedative. Really, it just kind of takes the knots out of your everyday life and smooths things out. It's a general restorative. It does act as an antispasmodic. It's very gentle. Acts as an antidepressant, anti-anxiety herb. Um, it's got some demulcent to it. So it's a demulcent is this this soft kind of mucolytic kind of I had a teacher one time that called demulcents soft herbs. It makes the rough hot soft and smooth and and um, easy, right? So it eases things out. So therefore it's good for GI inflammation, urinary tract inflammation, skin inflammation. Um, I like to use it for rest and relaxation and stress. Um, one of my favorite herbs for allergies, I like to mix it with nettles and dandelion and spearmint because I like the taste of spearmint in allergies. Um, you can mix it with some different things as well. So uh, yeah, this is great. I love this herb, Avena sativa. This herb is super high, before we go on, this herb is super high in calcium and some of the really um, deep minerals like magnesium. And I mean, I don't have it all listed here. We can look it up, look it up if you want. In order to get that good calcium out of there uh, for people with osteopenia and osteoporosis, for the 
or for healing bones, right? Keeping our bones nice and strong. You need to let this sit overnight in the hot water or in the cold water, okay? You need to let it sit overnight to get all of those really deep minerals out of it, okay? On we go. Nettles, and see, nettles is another one of my favorites. I grow both of these. In fact, um, I have a big patch of nettles that I pour lots and lots and lots of um, manure on from the chicken coop every, cause it loves, it loves, loves, loves compost. And so I like to give it and feed it like lots of good compost. So it keeps growing nice and nice and healthy. Urtica dioica. So I know I'm not, it doesn't matter how you say them. It's important that you know them, okay? Um, so nettles, nourishes the liver and the blood. It's very high in trace minerals and trace vitamins. It kind of tastes like grass a little bit, but this is one of the most highly nutri nutritious herbs that you can find. It's actually considered a food. And up until I think recently in the United States and probably many other places, they harvest this as food. Now, when you harvest it, be careful because you can't really see in this picture, but it's got some pretty sharp little, little spines on there. And there's a reason they call it stinging nettles because it will sting you and it hurts. You know, one of the traditional ways that they used to use nettles is they would take them and they would if you had bad arthritis or a bad pain of some kind, you would hit yourself with that, those nettles right over the joints that hurt. It would sting really, really horribly. In fact, um, there's a story of one guy that would spend two days in bed crying and then for six months he wouldn't have any arthritis pain. Okay, so that really does work. For our purposes, we're usually going to be using the leaves for our tea, although the root and the seeds are valuable in other ways, okay? Mostly this is a nutritive plant. It is a astringent plant, so it's going to nourish the blood. It's going to increase the viability of the blood. Um, it's anti-allergenic and antihistamine, so I always add this to my allergy formulas. It's anti-inflammatory, restorative. It brings your body back into balance. When I'm working with someone that I feel like a lot of their problems are caused because they're not eating very well, they don't have a lot of vegetables and those kind of things, I will often make this with our other two plants today and show them how to make an infusion, an overnight infusion, and they can make their oatmeal or other kinds of food with that. Put that in their soup, put that in their oatmeal, and wherever you're gonna use liquid, put that in their rice. And so they're gonna get the nutri nutrition in that way. Uh, it's a diuretic, so what diuretic means is that you're gonna, it's gonna help you um, urinate helps you get rid of the toxins in your blood and the solids through your urine okay but it also means that it's going to help swelling so if there's some swellings going on and we talked about the anti arthritic effects to get this the most out of this plant you want a long infusion you know you want to let it set overnight at least a couple of hours at the very least okay And our last plant of the of the day, excuse me, dandelion, Taraxacum officinale. I love this plant. It is so beautiful. You know, it is springy. Just look at this picture. Doesn't that just make your heart sing? I wonder who decided we couldn't have this in our lawns. It's pretty interesting. By the middle of the summer, it's gone anyway. Right? Anyway, 
all of the parts of the plant are used. And by the way, officinale with its botanical name, anytime you come across a plant that has officinale at the end means that it was an official medicinal plant at some time. This one has been used for thousands, thousands, if not years, if not from the beginning of time. This plant is from all around the world. It has naturalized everywhere on the planet. And that says something, right? It feeds our soil magnesium. Isn't that interesting? So if we don't want this plant in our yard, which I wouldn't imagine why you wouldn't, all you have to do is give it magnesium and it doesn't want to grow because it actually sets the magnesium in the ground, which is so in short supply these days with all the chemicals they put in different things. Okay. All of the parts of this plant are used. Okay. The leaves, when they come up in the early, early spring, the first part that you see is the leaves. These leaves have been harvested for many, many years as a spring tonic and digestive bitter. They are highly nutritious. So they have a lot of magnesium in it, lots of trace minerals and vitamins and all those kind of things. They are a digestive bitter and a stimulant. So they stimulate your appetite, but even more than stimulating your appetite, they stimulate your digestion, okay? They stimulate your digestive juices from the tip of your tongue to the back of your bottom, right? Um, and what happens is, is that we kind of eat and we don't digest everything that we need to digest. We don't um, get rid of all of the things that we need to get rid of after digestion. So we have what we consider to be toxins in that can build up in our bodies in different areas of our bodies. Many times they can be in our, in our bowels or in our urinary system, in our blood. Everyone has like little points of um, strengths, but they also have little points where they might be most likely to have illness. Okay, so um, what dandelion does as a, as a bitter stimulant is it increases our digestive juices so that we can digest all those little hangers on and help them get gone, whether that be through, um, you know, our um, defecation or through our urinary system. If we're building up stones, um, they really help to, it really helps to um, dissolve the stones. That's kind of more the root. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's very highly nutritious. I like to um, make a um, apple cider vinegar infusion out of um, or extract rather out of the, the leaves. I find that apple cider really pulls out um, the medicinal properties of a plant. Okay, so the flowers, they are sweet and super nutritious. I knew a woman once um, and she shared this recipe with me. If you're interested, email me and I'll, and I'll send it to you. Um, she has this most wonderful recipe for dandelion syrup. She makes it into a pancake syrup. It is fabulous, super nutritious, bright yellow, gorgeous. The roots are used um, as medicine for the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, and the urinary system. Um, it dissolves calcium buildups in our system, specifically in the digestive and the liver and the urinary system. So if you have problems with gallstones or urinary stones, this is a plant that you would want to use to soften and um, remove those. You know, this is not a heavy medicinal plant. This is a plant that supports our liver, supports our digestion, supports um, the health of our liver and supports the health of our gallbladder and our urinary system and balances our blood sugar. Um, and so for that reason, I added into many things that grounds you down to the earth and gives you all the magnesium and all of the wonderful connection that we need. So this is the end of our um, 
introductory class on herbal teas. I have um, an upcoming class series called Build Your Own Home Apothecary. If you've liked this class and would like to continue to study with me, um, here are some of the um, topics that we will be talking about in our series, Building Your Home Apothecary. We will be talking about how herbal medicine works, some simple treatments for your common, you know, for common family health issues, um, and how to look at those health issues, which is really very important as well. Some common herbs that you can use to build your medicine chest and what form you might take, you know, what form those might take. Um, how to make those preparations, um, what kind of herbs we're looking at, how we're, how we're going to choose them, and how we're going to use them. These are some of the um, ideas that we're going to take into this next series. Um, each of these topics may be about a two-hour um, workshop or lecture. Um, anything that we do live will also be taped as well. So stay tuned. If you'd like more information, please, there's a contact number right down below, Annie at wondermentgardens.com. Thank you for joining me um, on our journey through nourishing teas. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon, and I hope that um, you will join us in continuing our herbal adventure together. Have a wonderful day. Blessings.